Hello, everybody. My name is Zach Moss. Today, I want to talk about an expert's view regarding whether or not overpopulation is going to lead to mass extinction, so on and so forth. I obviously don't have all of my setup here yet because I moved to France for educational purposes. My goal really is just to expand kind of human understanding and more of an idealistic perspective um, by providing as much free education as I can. So I'm going to be showing you guys different studies from this expert. His name is Henry Laridan, which I probably butchered the bejesus out of his name. He's a demographer. I think that's how you say it, demographer. Jesus Christ. I should probably look these things up. He's a demographer from France. So he is a professor, and this is what he does. So he's looking at specific statistics from the United Nations as well as from MIT to try to understand Will we destroy ourselves as a result of overpopulation? So before I start, take your guess. You should put it in the comment section because I don't think YouTube shows it because they cut all recommendations to my channel and cut comments and views. But I am a little curious. Anyway, so if we're looking at the statistics that we are given, the best kind of metric to gauge population, before we even start, we need to understand where population is going to be gauged at roughly around 2050 and 2100 because that's kind of the best starting point for where exactly we can go. And if you guys don't want to know the specific scientific process and the specific statistics, you guys can kind of skip ahead in the, <laughs> the video if you would like. But I'm using the United Nations statistics because this individual had used it as well. And it's honestly the best metric to be able to gauge these things because from 1950 up all the way to now, 2021, United Nations has been pretty pretty good about getting the facts right. Right now, their predictions are coming correctly in terms of where they think humans are going to go in terms of population based off of climate change, based off of the changing rates per region, so on and so forth. So anyway, first let's look at the, the fertility rate, not mortality, Jesus Christ, in every single region right now. So for example, North America, Asia, so on and so forth, to try to gain a little bit better understanding about how we got to the answers that we got. And if you guys want to skip to the answer, if I, I hope to God I remember, I'll put the, the answer, the specific period of time in this video where I give you guys the answer. But anyway, I think you guys would appreciate this. In Europe right now, each woman is having 1.61 children and in North America, it is 1.75 children. So not quite the amount to be able to replenish the world, but that is not where everybody's concerned with. The concerning aspect is the developing countries supplemented with the fact that there's already overpopulation or at least believed overpopulation. So if each person who is currently here has one children, but every thousand has two, are we going to have problems? And that's where we start to get really technical. But if I were to finish my original point, Latin America, there's about 2.04 children per woman. So that's about even. Asia, it's 2.14. So now we're starting to increase a little bit. And then India is 2.24. The really concerning one are some of the different countries in Africa. So in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, it's about 4.71. Imagine that. It's a lot of mouths to feed. That's also one of the reasons why, as well as colonization and a million other reasons, why they are having such poverty rates that they're currently having. And one of the issues with that amount of children, obviously, is a lot of these countries have a higher mortality rate with adults. And so the average age tends to drop a little bit farther down, some of which the countries have a mortality rate in the average life expectancy to about 50. But anyway, if I were to continue here, Got my little notes here on the side. So where it's projected to go for fertility rates region to region is Asia and Latin America. Thankfully, by the time we're about 2050-ish, we should be at approximately two children for Asia and Latin America per woman. So it's a de degression. Not a lot, but a little bit. So it's about even. Now, Europe and North America is more than likely going to be around two. Now, the question obviously is like there's this kind of resistance oftentimes in human nature where if something's going down, we want it to go up. And when it's going up, we want it to go down. So there might be a rebellious instinct to try to change the fact that the population numbers are going down by being the oddity and having more kids when everyone else is having less. That is something that's being discussed. But for the practices and purposes of this argument, we're not going to constitute that because it hasn't yet happened and it's hard to gauge. 
Now, Sub-Saharan Africa, it has two different potential outcomes. The one outcome is that by 2050, or excuse me, 30 years, Jesus, why they chose 30 and not 50 for this specific metric, I don't know. But in 30 years, Sub-Saharan Africa is likely to fall under three. So going from four to three children per woman. And then 2.16 by 2100. And again, this is according to the United Nations. Okay, the other metric is about 2.67 kids as opposed to three in 30 years. Okay, so we got the point. Right now, there's about 7.7 billion people on the planet. Now, the world is expected to get to about 9.7 billion people as a median outcome. It's hard to gauge outcomes too. You usually want to do a spectrum in case you're wrong and by how much you're wrong. So anywhere from 8.9 to about 10 billion people is what we are to expect. Now, the other question is, will that number drop farther below that? Well, more than likely, no, it's not. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, holy good God, but Jesus, Zach, there's this thing going on that's called COVID. Have you ever thought about that and perhaps how it influences this? Well, these statistics were gained in 2019, and this individual, who I had already forgotten his name, I should probably remember it, Henry Laridan, so he had written this in 2020, and what we actually found was COVID had killed 5 million people. In order to severely affect the ratio of births and deaths in the world, we need to have approximately 83 million deaths to actually have a significant change on the overall global scale. I know, that sounds pretty intense. For perspective, when AIDS had been more of a thing and more prevalent earlier on, a few decades back, there's about 35 million deaths. So even that wouldn't have affected the ratio too much. And then after World War II, there's about 50 to 80 million deaths, not including the deaths that happened before and after as a result of the Soviet Union and so on and so forth. So even that, that would have an impact. But from a 1 million square foot view up straight down into Earth, it has an impact but doesn't have as big of an impact as one might think. So the point that I'm trying to prove here is that what we see right now is that more than likely the deaths and the births are not gonna change more than what these statistics had already shown us. So all the way to this point, if you decide to click ahead, now I'm going to give the answer, will we all die as a result of overpopulation? Well, based off of what this researcher had found, because of how Climate change is spreading right now and affecting us, but also contrasted with the inventions of, say, for example, um, a hyper productivity with result to increasing food production and all these other things. By 2050, no, we are not going to die as a result of climate change. In 2100, we are also not expected to essentially die as a result of overpopulation. Excuse me, originally I meant overpopulation. So 2050, 2100, no, we are not going to be in that big of a problem as a result of climate change. But I'm going to get back to this point because there's factors that they did not consider. But according to this individual, we have enough food supplies right now to be able to last that long. Now, there are studies that have contradicted this individual, like MIT had created a study in the 1970s, which would try to dispute the current studies by the United Nations. However, what we had found was that despite the fact that MIT had believed that there was going to be a mass death as a result of overpopulation and the population in 2100 would balance to be around what it was in, I think, 2007, they're actually wrong about a lot of things. For example, they didn't account for how hyperproductive we'd be for agricultural production. They also failed to understand our energy reserves back in, or all the way up to the 2000s. So that's been disproven. However, I do have a criticism with this argument about overpopulation. My criticism is, despite the fact that we can survive overpopulation up to 2100, despite climate change, there's two factors that they don't really address. Number one, who's going to survive? Because it's one thing to say us in America is going to survive. However, what is going to happen to say the Palestinians who's right now 97% of their drinking water is undrinkable? 
can they survive? Or for example, the Syrian civil war was started as a result of the worst drought in 375 years, approximately give or take a year. And that had led to droughts, forced more people in the cities, was overpopulating the cities, thus causing the civil war. So what happens to these minority groups who are in trouble? Do they die out? Do we accept the fact that there's going to be a genocide, but in the long term that doesn't lead to a statistical anomaly? And so I think one of the issues that we have with gauging overpopulation and whether or not humanity is surviving is who is actually surviving. Because if a race, for example, or an ethnicity dies, we as a human civilization partially die as well. Also, these statistics go up to 2100, but they don't gauge past that. Climate change is expected to affect us more so in 2100 than it is now. And so what the point I'm trying to make is that if their metrics gauged past 2100, which I believe it should, we have a different story. And overpopulation might not be the issue that's going to push us all to death. But maybe we should be focusing on other things as well, like not overpopulation, but will the population that exists in 2100, can they even survive the climate change? So it's not even a numbers game on how many people are left, but rather instead, can the people who are left survive? Food for thought. And I'd appreciate a subscribe because YouTube decided to crack down on me and they cut all recommendations to my channel. So I would appreciate it. Rockfin recommends my video. So if you believe in independent media, I'd also appreciate that. Thank you very much.